I am struggling today with what I can possibly share. Yet another tragedy has struck our people. This time a building collapsing in the heart of the Surfside Jewish community on Miami Beach. Barely a month after the Lagba Omer stampede in Meron, which was followed by bleacher collapse in the Hasidic court of Carlin Stolin, we now encounter this incomprehensible calamity. Once again, we find ourselves grieving, refreshing news sites, tracking social media, and speechless. Just grasping around for insights, I searched back to examine what I wrote in past years and was surprised to discover that exactly two years ago, another heartbreaking event, the drowning of young Rabbi Ruvain Bauman on Virginia Beach, coincided with this week's Parsha. At that time, I sought meaning in the Parsha's enigmatic story of Bilam, a Gentile prophet said to be on par with Moshe himself, exhorted by Balak, the malevolent king of Moab, to visit the Jewish people in the desert and curse them. Initially, despite his nefarious nature, Bilam staunchly refuses, aware that God opposes this plan. Yet Balak continues to insist, and finally, when promised a great fortune, the prophet acquiesces. Still, along the route, Bilam's donkey starts speaking to him, warning Bilam and actively working against his desires. Bilam persists and reaches the Jewish camp, yet at the final moment ends up praising and blessing the Jews instead of cursing them. The words he offers, in part, are the famous Matovu, included at the beginning of morning prayers and popularized as a song in recent generations. How goodly are your tents, O Jacob, your dwellings, O Israel. The Talmud and other commentaries offer various interpretations of what tents and dwellings refer to. One is that tents refers to our synagogues and dwellings to our study halls. In other words, our primary communal spaces are both holy and worthy of immense praise. In the Virginia Beach tragedy, we did in fact witness Billum's approbations expressed in our beautiful nation. Legions of volunteers from major Jewish communities up and down the East Coast flocked to the area to offer material assistance, including their own search boats. My Norfolk-based colleague, Rabbi Gershon Litt, shared that the head of the local Coast Guard entered the shul and told the rabbi how astounded he was by the outpouring. He had been prepared to call off the search after a day or two, but when he witnessed the community's investment, he decided they could not justify that choice and marched on. This was a matovu moment. Amidst an awful situation, our collective response was, unsurprisingly, exceptional. The Talmud offers an interesting statement that God is often makdim refuah lamaka. He implants the solution or cure to a problem in the world before he introduces the challenge itself. One recent global example would be how the mRNA technology, the platform for both the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines, was in development for years prior to the pandemic, allowing for the rapid development of these life-saving serums. In this present Florida tragedy, I cannot avoid its astounding juxtaposition to a news story just 11 days old. On June 14th, a major public event was held at the Shul in Bal Harbor the same synagogue that has become the base of operations for coordinating current recovery efforts. At this ceremony, the governor signed a bill commissioning Hatzalah as Florida's first private faith-based rescue organization. Who could have imagined then that less than two weeks later, this nascent organization would be thrust into a desperate life-saving operation? A case of Maktim Rafu'a Lamaka, indeed, and another resounding testament to the Matovu greatness of our communal infrastructure. I conclude as I began, confounded and disconsolate. The weight of these cascading catastrophes is simply too heavy for our broader family to bear. I find partial solace in observing the signature Jewish response. Hundreds of thousands of dollars donated within hours, an outpouring of prayers, as well as concrete support for those waiting in agony for news of their loved one's fate. And I take further comfort in the notion that God, 
as inscrutable as his designs for us may be, surfaces a salve just as it will be needed. The very rescue group now working around the clock was deputized only days ago in the very synagogue serving as a command center of kindness and activism. May we no longer require their services, and may those most deeply affected find comfort in the enveloping embrace of the Jewish people. Shabbat Shalom.